Hello children, this is Cherry's online classes. Today's class is on orbit, subshell and orbitals and it's for Linnaeusia. Now the word orbit is very familiar to you. In solar system you learn that planets go around the sun and they move in a path called orbit. Similarly in chemistry you learn in an atom, the electrons go around the nucleus in orbits. That's according to Niel Bohr's theory. Now let's learn more about it. Now we'll see how it is explained in Niel Bohr's model. Here you find the first picture with nucleus and around that you have the orbit K and it is given the number 1. And then you have L with 2 m with 3 and n with 4. You know that electrons go around the nucleus along these orbits. And now see, each orbit is having some energy associated with that and it is fixed. You find that the first shell that is K shell is having the lowest energy level and when you go to the next shell L, the energy level is higher. And so on it goes like that to M and N and you find that N is having higher energy level than M. And so if you look here, it's given E1 less than E2 less than E3 less than E4, which means that energy level of 1 is less than energy level of 2 and so on. Hope it's clear. Now it's shown. 1 having the lowest energy and 4 having higher than that. Now we'll see how many electrons can be accommodated in each orbit. See, the formula to find the maximum number of electrons in each orbit is 2n square, where n stands for the orbit number. So if you put 1 in the base of n, it becomes 2 into 1 square, which is nothing but 2 into 1, that is 2. So I'll show you now, this is the nucleus and here you have the first orbit that is n is equal to 1. So when you put n in the place of n there in the formula that is 2n square, 2 into 1 square it becomes and therefore 1 square is 1 and therefore 2 into 1 square is 2. So the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the first shell number 1 is 2. Now we'll go to the Next one, second shell, so n will be equal to 2. And now you find out the maximum number of electrons with the formula 2n square, where n is 2. So n square, 2 square will become 4, 2 into 4 will become 8. So how many electrons you can put? 8 electrons. Now we'll go to the next one, this is the third shell, so n will be 3. Now find the number of Electrons you can accommodate in that. 3 square is 9. 2n square will become 9 into 2, 18. And now see, 18 electrons can be accommodated in the third shell. And now the fourth one. Here, n is equal to 4 and therefore, n 2n square will become 32. Now we are going to learn something very important. Here, you find that when you put the electrons in the orbits, the last shell can accommodate only 8 electrons. That's the rule. So even if it comes more than 8, you will have to make some rearrangements there. So we'll take the example of potassium and see how you can do it. The nucleus and the first shell with 2 electrons and then comes the second shell and it can take 8 electrons. So you put all the 8 electrons there. The remaining you have 9. There comes the problem. If that is going to be the last shell where you can accommodate actually 18 electrons, but you cannot do that. See, if you put 9 electrons there, that is against the rule that you have learned that maximum number of electrons in the outermost shell should be only 8. So we'll see now. This is wrong and see how we how we can do it. So the nucleus of the potassium you can see there. And the first shell with 2 electrons, second shell with 8 electrons, 
and the third shell will put eight electrons and in the fourth shell we will put one. We have split that nine into eight and one. One will go to the last shell and eight in the previous one. Now we have the points to remember. The first point is that an electron will always fill an orbit with lower energy first and then occupy the higher energy ones. And now the second one, only a fixed number of electrons can be filled in each orbit depending on the orbit number. Now the third point, maximum number of electrons in the outermost shell can first is 8 only. Now we'll do the next topic, subshells. According to the modern theories, each shell is having subshells. The first shell K is having only one subshell and that is S. Whereas L has two subshells and they are S and P. Now the third shell M has three subshells, S, P and D. And N has four subshells, S, P, D and F. See, when I explained S, P, D and F, I know that it wasn't clear for you, but you will understand that only if you learn the word orbital. So we'll go to orbital now. And if you read the definition of what is orbital, it is a 3D region around the nucleus where you can find an electron 90% of the time. I'm sure you wouldn't have understood what it is. It's something you go to imagine and get it. So you will learn more about orbital now. Now remember that S, P, D and F are the subshells of, of the main shells K, L, M and like that. But now this S subshell has only one orbital but P, D and F are having more orbitals. Now what is this orbital? It's something you go to imagine when I explain. Okay? Always remember that electrons are running very fast in the subshells. 90% of their time is spent in some particular region which is in 3D. So that region's boundary is what you see as spherical shape or dumbbell shape. Is that clear? I say once again, when the electrons move very fast, suppose it is in the sub shell S, that is S orbital, then you find that the boundary is in the spherical shape. That means inside that is going very fast and there are only two electrons in each orbital. Remember that. They never hit each other. They keep their rules and play inside, running around. But they keep a boundary in the spherical shape. Now you take the P subshell. P has three orbitals. All the three are in dumbbell shape. So you can imagine how they are running. Remember that shape is the shape of the boundary where you find the electrons most of the time. That is 90% of the time is spent running inside that boundary. That's what. So you can imagine along the x-axis, suppose it's going like this, like this, like this, fast, fast, fast. Then you say that is one orbital in the dumbbell shape. And all the three are having dumbbell shape but in different directions. One in the x-axis, one in the y-axis and the other one is in the z-axis. There are three orbitals for P. And therefore, 3 into 2, 6 electrons can be accommodated in the P orbital. Now, when it comes to D, there are 5 orbitals. But the shape is a bit complex there. For F and D, actually, you need not learn the shapes. You need to know only this much. Now, you can see the S subshell here. That is spherical in shape and it has only one orbital. Remember that S has only one orbital 
and each orbital can accommodate only two electrons. And it is shown in the square box with two arrows, one in the upward direction and one in the downward direction. This is P subshell and it has three orbitals. The shape of P subshell is dumbbell and you have three orbitals. Each orbital can accommodate two electrons and therefore three into two, six electrons can be accommodated in P subshell. This is D subshell where you have five orbitals. Now for D and F actually you need not learn the shapes because it's a bit a complex one. So learn that D has five orbitals and each orbital can accommodate two therefore five into two maximum number of electrons in the D subshell is 10 electrons. F subshell has seven, seven orbitals. So the number of electrons F subshell can accommodate will be 7 into 2, 14 electrons. Now see the points you got to remember. First one is each orbital can accommodate a maximum of 2 electrons. And the next one is an electron moves with a fixed amount of energy. I hope you have understood what is an orbital. If you have any doubt, please do comment in the comment box. Next video will be on periodic table and electronic configuration. And if you like today's video, please like, share and subscribe.